are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back to a brand new season of Healthy Germantown TV. I'm your host, Will Kasner. We are here today to show you how you can live a happy, active, and healthy lifestyle right here in Germantown. Here with us today is the Natural Resource Manager, Keith Peluso, for Parks and Recreation to talk a little bit about secrets that are in your own backyard right here in Germantown. Mr. Keith, thanks hey, for stopping by. Thanks for having me, Will. I uh, really appreciate y'all letting me come out here today. I think uh, one of my favorite ways to stay active is to be constantly curious about the world around me and just to go explore. And so we brought our kayaks out here today. We're gonna take a little look around the Wolf River, which is a really amazing place, especially to have right in our backyards here at Germantown. Uh, the Wolf River is one of those rivers in West Tennessee that has changed so much throughout the years and it's actually a little bit on its way back to being uh, uh, what it should be. Yeah, um, and so the Germantown section of the Wolf River is more or less unique in in the way that over the years it's changed. So tell us a little bit about the history of like the Wolf River and how things have progressed through the years as far as the ecosystem goes. Sure, yeah, I mean the, the Wolf River, like most of the rivers in West Tennessee, uh, just because of our unique soil textures and the, the way the land works and the water runs off, uh, these rivers are meant to, or they have usually naturally meandered. And once you start to build in buildings and structure and all these things that humans really need, and how we like to build our houses right up next to the water, um, those rivers can't naturally meander the way they would before. And so this river is used to constantly changing. And, the, and when it constantly changes that way, there's so many different habitats that are created that allows life to flourish. And when you kind of channelize it to where it can't move the way it's supposed to, it kind of deadens the river. And then as far as being impacted with uh, many humans living around it at once too, that also has a huge impact on the variety of life that we find in the river. So this river actually used to be dead uh, in, in several sections where it wouldn't really support much life whatsoever. But now, uh, thanks to several different conservation uh, groups and agencies, it's kind of on its way back to, to some uh, success with respect to biodiversity. Yeah, to a new norm. So sure. tell us a little bit of like the wildlife highlights that one would see out here. I know like a lot of people that live in Germantown, you, <clears throat> you're in the suburbs and you mm -hmm. don't feel real connected to nature, mm -hmm. but we have a whole world back here that's almost untouched. I, I, I think that this area really, and the Memphis area in general, and of course birds are my thing, but right here, Right, ne right next to the Mississippi River like this, we're right in the Mississippi Flyway. It's one of the largest migratory pathways for so many birds in North America. And so most of the birds in North America travel down one of those pathways, and this is one of ours. Uh, so if you travel up and down the Wolf River Greenway, looking, at, looking around in the little wetlands along the riparian zone of the river where all the banks are and where the forest right next to the river is, there's no telling what you'll see at different times of year too. So things are always changing. We're, we're actually getting really close to the fall migration right now. And so there are so many it's different- It's time for me to go. Yeah, there's <laughs> so many things, yeah. So, you know, a lot of people look at the health mentality as, you know, forms of exercise or movement or eating, mm -hmm. but t talk a little bit about how, how nature impacts our mentality and our outlook on health and life in general. I think that, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a career park ranger and I spend most of my time uh, very f physically active out in the, in the outdoors while I'm uh, finding out new habitats, kind of researching what plants and animals we have here in Germantown so that we can take better care of them. Uh, but I think that as well as staying physically active while you're doing that kind of work, you also gain a new perspective from being constantly curious about the world around you and just always having that sort of mind that wants to learn about everything around you. And I think that, that 
other than staying physically active, that, that gives you a very well round balanced lifestyle. Yeah, and it's always good just to be refreshed. You know, we're out here today, the wind's blowing, the something something singing, what is that? Cricket cricket bugs, Those cicadas. Cicadas, yeah. So, you know, you just being out here has such a you know, a good uh, reviving feeling mm -hmm. to to your spirit, you know, when you especially when you spend all day in the office or mm -hmm. whatever. So you, if you're coming out here on your lunch break or For sure. or walking the greenway or whatever, there's so many opportunities to just get in touch with nature. Absolutely. Speaking of getting in touch with nature, if you had to name three ways that the Wolf River could impact your health mm -hmm. physically, like how how would this environment, this stretch, benefit us as citizens, residents of Germantown, on the on the physical standpoint? Yeah, I mean, not only from a learning perspective, but this, the our section of the Wolf River and kind of the way it's been managed is a great opportunity for people to get more active because you can kayak up and down this section of the river. There's also the Greenway, which hundreds and hundreds of people use every day to walk or run or bike or really, you know, just to hang out and look at things. And I think that uh, there's several there are several opportunities for people to be more active while also learning about the world around them here. Tons to do. Now mm -hmm. Parks and Recreation also is offering a few <clears throat> ghost river trips in the fall. Tell us a little bit about what all that entails. What's the difference between our section and the, the ghost section of the Wolf River? Yeah, the, there's a huge difference. They're part of, I mean, the, I mean the, the, it's a West Tennessee body of water, but the Wolf River, kind of the way this river works out is the banks are channelized, the current is a, a little bit faster, and so the sediment load is also much higher, but whenever it gets into the Ghost River, all of that, uh, where the water is all kind of in the same channel moving very swiftly, suddenly widens out, slows down, the sediment load drops out, and then that allows a lot of uh, different habitat to form too. So the Ghost River is a wild, wild place. It's, a, it's amazing. One of my favorite places in the world. And if you hadn't floated that, you need to. We've oh, got a good. couple trips coming up. They're filling up fast, but we're going to book a whole bunch more, so stay tuned mm -hmm. uh, for those. Now, one last thing. Say We've got our kayaks here. Mm -hmm. As kayakers, you're a pro kayaker, I'm sure. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> sure, what, are, what are three tips that you would give a novice kayaker, somebody's just jumping in, this section of the Wolf River tips on how to kayak safely. Well, just just like any other outdoor recreation, where I mean, it's an adventure, and so the main things that I I think are very important, not just with kayaking, but with any outdoor trip, is learn as much about the place you're going before you go. So be aware of the weather conditions. Uh, make sure you let people know where you're going, and always bring your proper gear. Uh, so you've got your safety vest on yeah. today. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna sit on top kayaks. We've got sunglasses. We got sunblock. We got insect repellent. Uh, we've got everything we need and we also have several people that know where we're going today and we're also fairly familiar with this area. So those are very, very important uh, points before you take any adventure, not just kayaking. For sure. Well, Keith, thanks for stopping by and filling us in on all the good info. When we come back, we will stop by Club Pilates to learn a little bit about what they do at their studio. Hey, let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. 
Welcome back to Healthy Germantown. We are here at Club Pilates with General Manager Alex Schulte. Alex, thanks for letting us stop by. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, well, I guess thanks for coming in. Oh, well, we're glad yeah. to. So tell us a little bit about how long you've been here, what you do, and what is Club Pilates. Yeah, so um, our studio here has been open um, just since the start of the year. Uh, we do have a sister studio in East Memphis. They've been open for um, over a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, but with Pilates, we truly believe that a lot of people think that Pilates is yoga. Uh, yeah, so is... we've done yoga on the show. But yeah, Pilates yeah. is, it is different, right? It is a little different, yes. Yeah. So um, Pilates, we're all about alignment and proper postural positioning mm -hmm. um, and every movement that you do is derived from the core so we really focus on a lot of core strength and stability um, and a lot of balance exercises as well which again is similar to yoga a little less spiritual and then we do also use equipment so we gotcha. are an equipment studio okay um, in studio we do have 12 reformers and uh, the reformers basically use springs and straps as mm -hmm. resistance uh, and so when we lay down on these reformers, the weight of gravity is taken off of your spine and your joints to exercise. So it's almost like you're doing this in space. Kind of, yeah, More or kind less. of, yes, almost. Well, just on your back, though. Well, and your knees, and so, uh, and your shoulders. So you're basically, like I said, taking that extra eight pounds of gravity off of your body. Mm -hmm. And so when you do exercise, it's not as strenuous, not as impactful. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's really beneficial to at least, you know, try Pilates. Yeah, so it's really good on the joints. Yeah. As far as the, the main difference between Pilates and yoga, is it the reformers that are used or? Um, not the main difference, because you can do Pilates without a reformer. You mm -hmm. can take a mat class. It's actually, um, a lot of people think that mat classes are actually harder than reformer classes. Right. Um, because you're using just your own body weight, where mm -hmm. with the reformer, you do have some guided assistance with the straps and the springs. But again, the biggest difference is kind of working muscles around a joint instead of like for injuries. Mm -hmm. People always say, correct the injury, then strengthen muscles around. But we like to strengthen the body as a whole. So yeah. we might correct injuries, but then we'll strengthen that body as a whole. And it starts from the core and works your way out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you'll see people just at the gym repping out crunches or sit-ups and you're like, oh, that's not doing anything, to where if they were actually focused on proper alignment of the spine and proper breath, they're actually working deeper core abdominals that way, and that's kind of what we focus on with everything we do. Really? So yeah. Pilates is like the fast track to a six-pack. Yes. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Coupled with healthy eating, of course. Yeah, of so course, of course. Can't that. be eating those cheeseburgers. Yes. You gotta watch out for those. <laughs> that's right. No Gus is chicken. Right, but it is good. It is good. So, now, how long have you been doing the Pilates instruction and yeah, management? Yeah, so I've been in about, uh, I've been in fitness for as long as I can remember. I was a collegiate volleyball player, and um, when I was in college, I had back surgery. And that's kind of what drew me to the whole mind, body, no impact form of exercise. Mm -hmm. And I tried a bunch of stuff. I tried bar, um, and I loved bar. And we do have um, a bar class here. Yeah. Um, but Pilates was really the only thing that I could do that I felt like I was strengthening my back and my core um, without being in pain. So mm -hmm. even after surgery, I still felt a little bit of discomfort. Right. And so I wanted to I exercise my whole life. I was like, what can I do that strengthens my back but also is not putting me in pain? Um, and so that's a benefit as well. All of our instructors, we have over 500 hours of certification. So if you do have spinal issues or plantar fasciitis or shoulder issues, we do know the correct um, like modifications the yeah. to give you yeah, yeah, to make sure that you don't re-injure yourself and mm -hmm. we can kind of go forward. It's, it's very similar to like a physical therapy. Right. So it's, it sounds really applicable to like athletes. Mm -hmm. Do you do a lot of specific work with athletes in the area? Um, we do um, quite a bit, actually. We, we have worked with a few baseball players from St. George's um, and Christian Brothers. They'll come in and do uh, private sessions because mm -hmm. you do have to be 18 or older to take uh, participate in our group classes. Right. Um, but as far as getting in the community, we do mat classes at Shelby Farms. So we've done mat classes at farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. um, and we're currently in the works to do a mat class with uh, the Memphis Grizzlies coming Very up cool. in the next few months. So keep an eye out for that. We will. Um, but yeah, we absolutely love to take mats out into the community and work that way. Because yeah. like I said, it's actually a little bit more challenging to do it right, on the floor. Right, because you feel everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no assistance. It's just you and your body and the mat. Mm -hmm. um, but you can still work on proper postural alignment and everything All that, good that stuff. way. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about 
what we like yeah, uh, yeah. equipment wise what what are we working with yeah so we have um about 10 pieces of equipment in the studio a lot of props that we use our main piece of equipment here is our reformer um, and as you can see the straps are here there's springs down there to change the resistance and we do have 12 of these in the reformer so you'll actually lay down on this we kind of call it this it's a little longer than maybe a twin size bed mm -hmm. you'll lay on there and You'll put your feet up on the foot bar to start the class, and that's kind of how you exercise laying down. Um, you'll spend a little bit of every single class we have on the reformer, and then there's different props we can use as well. So we have like a little fit ball, we have um, mm -hmm. a magic circle, we have a BOSU ball, and um, we also use what we call a springboard, which is over on the wall. Um, and then we do have other pieces of equipment in our private room, um, and that can go from anywhere between an exo chair, a Pilates arc, a ladder barrel, and then um, the RTC, which is the um, Cadillac. The Cadillac? Yeah. What does that do? So the Cadillac kind of looks like something like a reformer, except mm -hmm. there's a flat mat um, across the top, and then the reformer part is actually underneath. Yeah. And then there's towers on either side, and you can use different springs and pieces of resistance um, to either hang inverted, you can oh, wow. do everything that you can do here and on the springboard on the Cadillac. So it's like the granddaddy of all of Pilates all. equipment. Does yeah. it have a radio? Does, <laughs> it, it needs <laughs> Every one. Every good Cadillac has yeah, radio, Yeah, it right? needs <laughs> one, absolutely. It's actually the um, Cadillac was the first piece of Pilates equipment actually mm. ever invented. Really? Um, so yeah. this, all this kind of came after? Yeah, so Joseph Pilates, the founder of Pilates, he um, was in the war and when he was trying to um, rehabilitate war soldiers who couldn't get out of bed, mm -hmm. he would take the springs from their beds and hang them above the bed and that's how they would exercise, laying yeah. down in these beds. What? And, and so it that, became the Cadillac. That's crazy. Yeah, and so all these other pieces of equipment came to be and you have Pilates. Awesome. Well, we're almost out of time, so any last tidbits that you could give us on how Pilates can benefit the user yeah. or why we should be involved. Yeah, so I will say Pilates can be a little intimidating to people because of all the pieces of equipment. So we really wanna make sure that everyone feels welcome. So we do offer a free 30 minute intro class for you to come and we introduce you to all the equipment mm -hmm. and show you kind of how your body should feel, what muscles you should be working. Yeah. Um, no pressure. And I will say 90% of people that walk through our door have never been on a reformer before. So yeah. they're not alone. And then you can just see if you like it. See if it's something that might be for you and um, see if we can help you in any way. Sounds great. We look forward to yeah. trying it out. Yeah, I better see you in class. All right, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have here. When we come back, we'll be at Cameron Brown Park to talk to you about the Knight Rider family bike ride. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. How long have we been married, dear? For 76 years. He was kind and generous to me before we married, and he was kind and generous to me all these years. We decided on Meals on Wheels because I was getting to the point where I couldn't do all the things that I had been able to do. We're the Spans. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back to Healthy Germantown. We are here at Cameron Brown Park to talk about the upcoming Knight Rider Family Bike Ride presented by Germantown Parks and Recreation and the one and only Germantown Chamber of Commerce. Here today with us are the best people in the world, Janie Day and Kayla Sanders. Thanks for stopping by. All right, so thank you. tell us a little bit about what you do with the Germantown Chamber. The Germantown Chamber is all about 
networking and doing business with all of our businesses. So we're here to support businesses and have them do business with each other. But we also do events like Ooh. Knight Rider, which comes up in October. Mm -hmm. And this is our fourth year, so we're very excited. Um, it's October the 3rd, and it's right here in Cameron Brown Park. Mm -hmm. And we will ride from Cameron Brown uh, to down the Wolf River Boulevard mm -hmm. and back. It's about a four mile ride. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, we've got our bicycles with us today, but they're not decorated yet. Right, these are, these are the skeleton that's bikes, true. right? <laughs> so you bring your own bike mm -hmm. and you bring an age appropriate uh, helmet, helmet like you're wearing. Safety yes. first. So, yes, right. that one probably Gotta wouldn't help. fit me, but it fits you. Well, especially with your mohawk. Then. Well, I know. And then you have to, <laughs> it really is cool because parents come, mm -hmm. kids come, they decorate their bikes and themselves, as yeah. you can see in uh, glow in the dark and as I say blinky things because I'm blinking but it's daytime and you can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's great we raise money for Parks and Rec mm -hmm. and we raise money for ourselves. It's a great so event. It is a great event and last year we had a group from an inner city come mm -hmm. out and I hope we've invited them back again this year. It was a group of girls who if they uh, came to the dance class 30 days in a row, yeah. they got to pick a night out and they, and they chose night rider. Rider. Awesome. So it was really cool. So it's not just a Germantown event. Yeah. It's an event for all kids from everywhere. Kids, families, kids, everybody, families. everywhere. We've, we've had grandparents yeah. and yeah, it's really terrific. I like it. And now the ride, is it is it like uphill both ways? No, there's a little bit of hill, mm -hmm. so your four-year-olds and five-year-olds can actually get up that. So, and, and it's uh, our title sponsor mm -hmm. is uh, Germantown Ch uh, Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. We thank Ron Robertson for that. Thank you, Ron. And this is their third year to sponsor. Uh, sponsor. So it's really, it's really terrific. Yeah. So what, what are some things that really make this event kind of stand out, make it unique? Well, I think it's because it's a community event. Mm -hmm. And the Chamber's mission statement includes community, partnership, and growth. Yeah. So we love to have all the kids out, uh, the parents, the community gets involved. And, that's, and we also have Rock and Robin. Mm -hmm. who is a DJ and he yeah. keeps it all going before the event yeah. because he does uh, activities for the kids. We have moon bounces, we have cornhole throw, mm -hmm. we have a, a hula hoop contest all right. and for the parents and for the kids. Really? So yeah, it's, it's, it's not just a ride, it's a lot of fun. Then yeah. after the ride we have uh, food for everybody mm -hmm. and water, trying to away, get away from the soft drinks. Yeah, water's so good, water. healthy, healthy. And then we also have the ice cream truck from Carl Greenway's uh, marble slab and uh, creamery that's that coming here. So fantastic. we've got food for the kids and the parents and mm -hmm. ice cream for the kids and Man. parents. And so you got food, music. Yes. Glow sticks. Yes. And bikes. Yes. I mean, that's essentially the greatest event ever <laughs> created, right? Yes. We're very, very excited to, to, and as it grows, we're just really excited to have it. We always have it in October mm -hmm. just because it's a little cooler then. It's and a good it's month. Not, yeah. yeah. So the moon bounces are for all age appropriate. Mm -hmm. And um, then we have as I said, the food and the ice cream. And the police uh, are there just yeah. to make everybody safe. So from what I understand, the police from the city of Germantown mm -hmm. will be closing Wolf River Boulevard on both sides. Oh yeah, the whole thing's getting shut down. Right, right. so I'm uh, gonna have to go another route to get home. Right. <laughs> but it is for safety and it is definitely safety first in Germantown. Definitely, the good thing about the event is it's really centered on kids and closing a big street like Wolf River at night. It's a really cool effect, I'm it, sure, yes. to be out there with, yes. with, under the lights and everybody's glowing and yes all and there's water stuff. stations so you're not going to have anybody getting dehydrated you know dehydrated or yeah. anything so yeah, yeah. We, we're very conscious of that so it's a lot of fun well good and uh, as parks and recreation staff just to let you know we've got a couple of really good video ideas coming up on how to train for this event oh good uh, so, you know one of our secrets for training for the night rider event well, I can't tell you that. It's a secret. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. we'll have to stay tuned. We got some good stuff coming out. Okay, but good. Aside from that, what are some of your tips as far as, you know, from the Germantown Chamber, as far as how to, to prepare, maybe before the event or even the day of, how to prepare to, to really get the most out of the event? Invite your friends. Mm -hmm. 
get your classroom to come. Yeah. Maybe you have a competition. If we get 10 in our classroom, we get an ice cream party or something. Get everybody to come because we can handle a large crowd. Right. And we that's our main thing is get have this event to grow so that we invite lots of kids. Not only the Germantown Municipal School District kids, but also your church groups, mm -hmm. your uh, uh, private school groups, right. any of that. So bring people with you. You can do the training part, <laughs> yeah. but, but we really want more people to come and have the event grow, as we said. Yeah, do you have a, a goal number in mind this year? I think year? we had about 200 last year. We'd yeah. like to make that 300 this year. I like that. That's a lot of bicycles and a lot of glowing. Germantown, take note. 300 <laughs> is right. the goal for Night Rider this year. That's I'm excited. Right. I know y'all are excited. We are. Anything else you'd like to add? We're about out of time, but uh, any last tidbits, info? Kayla is uh, our young person who is at our chamber now, hey, and Kayla. she's going to be helping us with the event. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we have lots of volunteers from you all yeah. and also from us. So mm -hmm. we're, we're all ready to go. Good. So we get a lot of support from local schools as far, yes. uh, as, far as the volunteers go. So, I mean, it's going to be a fantastic night. If you're not doing anything on October 6th, you need to be here. If you are doing something, cancel it and come here. <laughs> That's so, exactly right, Will. Get ready. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> yes. I'm excited. It's great to partner with you guys on this event. Thanks. And I know Healthy Germantown also plays a role in the event this year as well. Yes, with, they do. Uh, we're going to have a booth set up. We're going to be passing out flashlights. So everybody's going to be lit to the max uh, and not slaying like flashlights. Right. Yes. Lights so, that flash. Yeah, lights that flash. <laughs> there you go. We are going to be glowing. Good. And it's That's gonna what be, it's about. It's going to be awesome. All Good. right. We'll see you there. Okay. And tell all your friends. Cameron Brown. Right Park. here. Awesome. All Thank right, G-Town. That's all the time we have for on this show. If you'd like more information about our show or any other show, check us out at www.gmtvonline.org. We'll see you next time and stay healthy, G-Town. <laughs>